Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Paul McCarthy, IRI's Europe Regional Director. And on behalf of the International Republican Institute, I'm happy to welcome you to today's event on developments in the small but very strategic country of Montenegro. During its past 15 years of independence, Montenegro has faced a variety of challenges, including fighting corruption, reform of the judiciary, and ensuring freedom of conscience. Last August, we saw that political change is possible with the election of a new government, which has made tackling these problems key priorities. Unfortunately, as the country continues to move along its path towards EU integration, we have also seen a troubling rise in inter-ethnic and inter-religious uh, inter tensions in the country. As IRI's work in Montenegro has grown in recent years, we've sought to address these worrying trends by working with partners like the Podgorica-based Center for Democratic Transition, or CDT, to analyze the causes and effects of the rise of ethno-nationalism on all sides in Montenegro. We are excited to have Dragan Koprovica and Milica Kovacevic from CDT with us today to share their findings and recommendations from a yet to be published white paper on the subject. We also have with us this morning an impressive panel of experts who will be commenting on these recommendations and telling us how they see the situation. Thank you all for joining us this morning. I look forward to the presentation and the discussion. I will now turn it over to IRI's Deputy Director in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Amila Karacic, to share a few words about our program and the event today. Amila? Thank you very much, Paul. Over the past nine months, as part of IRI's regional program, 10 researchers have been examining the rise of ethno-nationalism, far-right extremism, and anti-Western sentiments in five Western Balkan countries, including Montenegro. The researchers are all members of IRI's Western Balkans Task Force, a group of thought leaders and decision makers who not only analyze key issues affecting democratic processes, but also offer policy recommendations and advocate for their implementation and ultimately adoption in national parliaments. We're grateful to the National Endowment for Democracy for supporting these efforts and recognizing the value of cross-sectoral cooperation and regional exchanges. IRI is very happy to open an office in Montenegro. Our standalone program started this year and we are very excited to work with young political leaders and strengthen both their skills and their cross-party cooperation through our Advanced Leadership in Politics Institute. Building relationships of trust among young political leaders is critical, especially in times of increased ethno-nationalist sentiments and political divides. Our recent focus group findings show how divided the Montenegrin society has become over the past year. So without taking too much time from our panel today and our presentation, I would like to conclude by saying that we are delighted to uh, host this panel today and to share findings from our Montenegro white paper I want to thank the panelists for accepting our invitation and to all of you, thank you very much for joining us today. Without further ado, I give the floor to our moderator, Radomir Kravchkovic. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello from my side and uh, greetings from Podgorica. My name is Radomir Kravchkovic. I'm journalist and editor at the Television VST in Podgorica and uh, thank you for the opportunity to moderate uh, this event and be a part of a discussion about such important topic for uh, Montenegro. I will just give you uh, some brief outline of the uh, run of this event. Uh, so we will start with Mr. Dragan Koprevica, uh, Executive Director of Center for Democratic Transition, NGO based in Podgorica, and uh, Milica Kovacevic, President of uh, Center for Democratic Transition, and they will uh, uh, present us their findings from uh, uh, their white paper on uh, rise of ethno-nationalism in Montenegro in past uh, 15 years. Uh, their presentation uh, will last about 25 to 30 
uh, minutes. Then I will uh, introduce our uh, panelists and they will be given approximately uh, five minutes to uh, each to, to share remar remarks in response to white paper of CDT. Uh, also, I will use any remaining uh, time to uh, follow up of uh, any points with uh, panelists. At the end, uh, I think that uh, we will uh, have a lot of time for uh, questions submitted uh, by the audience. And uh, the end of the event will be at 11 a.m. USA time or uh, 5 p.m. Uh, Podgorica uh, time. So uh, now I will turn to uh, Mr. Dragan uh, Koprivica. The floor or Zoom window is yours. Thank you, uh, Rayo. Good afternoon or good morning for everyone from my side as well. I would like to start uh, saying thanks to IRI, to uh, uh, Paul Borislav and his team for giving us opportunity to work on this important topic and to present it on uh, this event. As you already hear, we are here to present our analysis of main causes of growth of ethno-nationalism in Montenegro in recent years. I will try to give more uh, of a political context that led us to this situation and what motivated us to conduct such analysis, while my colleague Milica will tell you more about our findings. As you probably know, Montenegro was for almost two decades described as a multicultural, multi-ethnic country with good neighborly relations clear Euro-Atlantic path and front runner in integration. However, these days you can hear very different descriptions. Montenegro is seen as more as a problem uh, and a country with a potential conflict uh, in the Balkans. To explain what happened, I need to go a little back uh, to the past in 2006, right after the country got independence. So the first issue that we recognizing uh, since then is disrespect of the constitu constitution. Our constitution was designed for Montenegro to build uh, a so-called civic nation or civic state based on uh, liberal democratic values. And uh, that constitution was and is ideal model for development of the modern democratic state and the best possible solution for a place with such turbulent history and so many differences to stay together and to grow better. Instead, we got a country where interests of ethnic and religious groups substitute the interests of uh, the citizens or, or of individuals. Right, right wing politicians have told us a lie that multi ethnic is the same as a civic in an effort to make a society a confederation of ethnic groups or tribes. Right wing is now growing on all sides amongst all nationalities in Montenegro. Political scene is extremely polarized for a very long time already. And that now shows the effect in the radicalization of citizens. Church has become the most important player, political player, interfering more and more public policies and decisions. After influencing the, the outcome of elections, they promised to withdraw from the state politics but they continue to influence appointments, legislation, and policies in different areas. The secularism is endangered from both side, sides. Not only the church interferes in the state, but also state wants to decide on the internal matter of the church. What is really worrying is that there is no clear vision for the future or any consensus around what actually represents the public interest. At this point, no one seems to have solution on how to overcome this problem. Political context is such that the civic forces are squeezed between strong, strong nationalisms and their voices becoming less influential. Right-wing forces stimulate nationalism and thus prevent the opportunity of cooperation amongst the moderate forces that exist in all political parties, both in government and the opposition. The process of European integration has been declining at the, or at the best stagnant for a year. 
Serbian nationalism has fueled the growth of Montenegrin nationalism. And right now, so-called Montenegrin forces do not even resemble the civic liberal and open-minded movement for independence from 2006. We can recognize the spiral of silence strategy by national forces aim at shutting down critical voices and present the loudest opinion as a dominant or the only one. Montenegro is very sensitive place right now. It is clear that NATO membership alone did not bring us to the safe side and that couldn't cure the problems imminent to the entire region. We are grateful to IRI for supporting us in researching and communicating difficult things that many didn't like to hear uh, here in Montenegro. These findings that we produce and recommendations that we, uh, recommendations that we offer uh, to decision makers are most important issue that, uh, that our organization CDT will be working on in up, uh, upcoming months. That would be all from me for this introductory part and Milica will give you more details about the findings. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay, um, hello everyone uh, from my side and uh, I see that we have a great audience here and I, I know that part of the reason why we wrote this white paper is because many of you, many of followers of Montenegro abroad were asking us in last sometime over a year what happened what happened with, with Montenegro, with that uh, leader and good example and bright spot in the Western Balkans. And uh, the paper is, is, is out. It's going to be available on IRIs and our website. And I really recommend it to read. I think it's a good piece of writing. And I will try to save time because we have such a great uh, panel here after uh, not to go into, into too many details, but I will try to run you through uh, several uh, important areas where we find main causes for what is going on now in Montenegro and what came uh, as a surprise to many that weren't uh, following this uh, uh, like on daily basis as we do. Uh, First thing, and Dragon already said that this didn't happen overnight, and it didn't happen uh, after uh, August elections, and it didn't happen only in, in last two years. Uh, this is the situation that built up on many wrong moves, moves or uh, many um, things uh, where uh, the, the the state, the the institutions, or the entire society haven't reacted properly. So Dragon already mentioned something about political scene, about political elites, and uh, he mentioned the word polarization, which is the thing that describes now Montenegrin political discourse, uh, where we are a country uh, that I don't think that there is a possibility to achieve consensus around single issue or even verbally if it's expressed in reality it doesn't happen uh, at all. So we had uh, uh, we had for last 15 years uh, nationalism as a, a replacement, as a substitute for policy. Uh, we had um, political elites, elites that were driven with short-term goals of winning the elections. And as everywhere in the Balkans and Montenegro as well, nationalism has shown as a strong uh, tool to mobilize voters, to mobilize community. The problem with that is that at one point uh, it exceeds uh, the ability your ability to control it. Uh, I would also want to shed a light at um, uh, things that are not um, fr from the inside. Uh, and uh, one of the, the important areas where we see uh, the causes of growth of uh, uh, um, nationalism, ethno nationalism in Montenegro is definitely foreign relations and it's foreign interference uh, in this region and uh, in Montenegro in particular. Uh, I, uh, I know that uh, uh, many of you were following what was going on in Montenegro. I know that many of you uh, are aware of the near-death near experience that we had back in 2016 after our um, uh, economic and then political romance uh, with Russia that didn't, didn't end up that well. Uh, we did a lot of writing about that we are now writing about other foreign influences as well. But as a general conclusion, we can say that, you know, small countries as Montenegro are 
at, at one uh, at one period of time became a spot of a uh, big international uh, 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 clashes and uh, then uh, it doesn't end, end up well uh, uh, for small countries for Montenegro what we see is that foreign interference is basically playing on using our vulnerabilities and and uh, that the the idea is to destabilize uh, to undermine and to prevent uh, what is stabilization development of rule of law and then further integration to what is western uh, integration at, at at that period of time so for those that say that uh, we defended ourselves uh, from russian influence in 2016 i would i would uh, i would leave that uh, open for argument because uh, if the call was to destabilize then uh, uh, it, it is it has been fulfilled successfully uh, let's not ignore the region so montenegro um, was also famous for very good relations uh, with all, all neighboring countries. Uh, good reg regional relations were our niche, niche of our foreign policy, and uh, VESCO knows that as direct participant in that, but we last years uh, see uh, big changes in that, and this, this is especially uh, on uh, in Montenegrin relations uh, with Serbia. And this is, uh, th there are obviously uh, arguments on our side, but, uh, the, you know, this is the region where uh, 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 you see uh, uh, in, in that, that every moment when it's not carefully observed, when there is no clear uh, carrot and stick policy, it is declining. And we see it is declining back to 90s, and then it affects everyone in this region, and it affected Montenegro significantly. We also see uh, for uh, now, for years now, uh, strong disinformation and propaganda activity set up infrastructure through uh, media, through online media mainly, but also through the social networks. And as a result, we see something that Ragan already mentioned, which is the atmosphere in which uh, right wing is uh, winning the public debate by speaking loudly, by speaking aggressively, and by shutting down all, all moderate voices so right wing is and there are all, there are uh, important there is important research on that about coordinated activity uh, meant to instigate the spiral of silence uh, where you see that modern lynch mobs are not on the streets they are online and in montenegro they are threatening everyone who expresses the voice uh, that opposes uh, uh, right wing ethno-nationalist concepts um, on the uh, 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 from from other like third actors, we see strong desecularization of the society. Uh, it was always a problem, and it's problem with most of most religious communities, and the biggest problem with the biggest, richest, most powerful one, which is the Serbian Orthodox Church. So what we are seeing uh, uh, in latest phases of that is that that uh, symbolic wall uh, between the church and state that separates church uh, and state is now. Uh, and we will need uh, uh, to invest time and uh, patience to rebuild it for the benefit of both church and, and the state of both concepts. On the inside, um, there is a severe lack of reforms, and that lack of reforms is also reflected in the stalemate of our uh, um, European integration. So we had uh, 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 reforms that were not uh, bringing effect, uh, that were not changing lives of citizens. We had uh, uh, hacking the process, uh, faking reforms, pretending, uh, and we uh, had uh, uh, huge problems with uh, uh, selective justice that led to decrease of the public trust in institutions. So we have citizens, the big number, increasing number of citizens since 2012 that believe that country is going right direction, that has declining uh, trust in public institution, and that genuinely believe that system is not just. And nationalism was uh, what was offered for those who see, uh, who see this injustice. So nationalism was the only policy offered for them to express their uh, criticism. And finally, um, uh, th th there was a uh, lack of state response uh, to all of this. There was lack of state response to uh, revision of history, uh, uh, disinformation, uh, foreign influences, 
public institution responsible institutions weren't uh, willing or weren't able to deal with these issues, it was easier to put it under carpet. And uh, we joked that there is no carpet big enough to put our problems and now is the time to react. And even recognizing the problem will be a huge, huge uh, step to, to, to start dealing with that. And you know what, it's not easy. Uh, it's not, it, it's this topic and I'm really grateful for, to, to IRI for recognizing that this is something we need to talk about. It's hard to, uh, to confess this defeat. It's hard, you know, for all of us who were working very hard on building uh, a civic state in Montenegro to confess that uh, a project didn't work the, the way we expected. Uh, but there are solutions. I, I tend to sound pessimistic. I'm really trying not to because we also proposed a number of recommendations. Uh, they were offered in some of them or many of them in different uh, form uh, to the previous governments. But now through this project, they were like composed into, into some uh, solid policy in this area. Um, there is a need for, uh, uh, for intervention on strategic, on uh, institutional and on operational levels. Uh, we don't have strategic documents, for example, on disinformation and propaganda or institutions dealing with it. We don't have a strategy to fight uh, hybrid threats. We don't have, uh, we have severe issues with identity politics, uh, with, with things like that. Uh, we had tendency to interpret violent extremism only as, you know, foreign fighters in, in Syria and, and Iraq, and not something that is happening, you know, that we have our homegrown uh, 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 radicalized uh, individuals and groups. And uh, last but not the least, and that's why I'm uh, really glad actually to, to have her here uh, MPs from, from both government and opposition in this panel, uh, we really need, we, desperate, we are in a desperate need of a political dialogue, of a comeback to, uh, of a political dialogue to institutions and to parliament as, you know, main institution in parliamentary democracy, uh, to stop talking from trenches on the streets, uh, from, from the vision of, you know, of, from, the, from the perspective of, of conflict, uh, to face this and to uh, put it as an important issue issue as an important problem on the agenda and start working on that, I truly believe that we are not late, that Montenegro has a chance to get back to the track and to, you know, to continue uh, the way that was at one time uh, 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 leading, you know, where, 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 where led the progress. Thank you, that's it. Thank you, Milica. You were quick and now we will uh, focus on uh, our uh, panelists and uh, it's my uh, pleasure to uh, present Mr. Nikola Kočević, Member of Parliament of Montenegro from the main opposition Democratic Party of Socialists, then uh, his colleague Mr. Miloš Konatar from uh, Ruling United uh, Reform Action, URA, and last but not the least, uh, Professor Vesko Garčević, professor at Boston University and former uh, Montenegro uh, ambassador uh, to NATO and uh, a man who uh, has an outstanding knowledge of uh, uh, many multilateral issues, uh, especially European uh, security. Uh, thank you for being part of this event and uh, we will start with uh, Mr. Rakočić. Thank you very much. Uh, greetings to all. Uh, thank you for this initiative. I think it's uh, very needed for Montenegro and for Western Balkans uh, as well, of course, uh, because we have uh, in past several years a strong influence, which is legitimate, strong influence of Russia and I believe that if we stand together as partners, and we have been partners 20, 25 years, uh, we, can, we can fight uh, for our mutual interests and for our mutual values. Uh, you know that Montenegro uh, have, has achieved a lot, of, uh, a lot on its way of emancipation in the past 25 years, especially past 15 years from, its, uh, from uh, regaining its independence. Uh, as you know, Montenegro was a small 
uh, republic uh, in uh, former Yugoslavia, uh, less developed. Now we are we were leaders uh, in in the region. Unfortunately, uh, past uh, year uh, has, has been tough for Montenegro. A lot of struggles going on, and uh, we are very much worried. Uh, you know that change, uh, political change, has come uh, after 30 years. Uh, which, uh, we, which we in uh, former ruling majority uh, find uh, normal. And we believe uh, it is good that change happened, uh, but we are very worried because that change uh, wasn't for better. On the contrary, the change was for the worse. Uh, as you know, uh, now we have uh, uh, turning uh, out of, of, of the path uh, of uh, westernization of the, of the society and NATO and new integration. Uh, as you know, we maintained peace in 90s uh, and of course turned back on nationalism, uh, which former Yugoslavia was part of uh, in the 90s and start uh, rapidly uh, to adopt European values. We are now a member of NATO uh, and we opened up every chapter on our uh, EU integration process. Uh, of course, for all those times that we have been fighting for European values, we had political forces in Montenegro uh, supported from Russia and from Belgrade to prevent Montenegro of becoming NATO and EU society. That is pretty much legitimate interest, uh, but we were fighting together with our US partners, together with our EU partners, and we uh, managed to uh, have our society on EU path. Uh, of course, uh, we now have those structures still alive, structures fighting against EU integration of our society, European values in, in our society, and not only they are alive, they are the strongest part of the majority in the new coalition in Montenegro uh, that is now in the government. Uh, I can only tell you one thing which is very interesting that all of those parties, political parties that voted for Montenegro becoming member of NATO in 2017 are now in the opposition. And every political party that didn't vote for Montenegro becoming NATO member uh, in 2017 are now in the ruling majority. So I don't have to tell you how uh, much in jeopardy is our way uh, towards adopting, further adopting uh, EU values. Uh, of course, for all, uh, speaking about multi-ethnical democracy, which is the main value of our society, I can tell you only one thing. And I think it's, of course, I can tell you a lot of things, but uh, one thing is, uh, can illustrate uh, what's been going on now. Uh, so for uh, all those times, for last 25 years, uh, we had uh, parties of minority, so Bosnians, Albanians, Croats, and others, uh, as a member of every government for the past 25 years. Uh, now, uh, in the new government, we don't have pa uh, parties of minority, neither, neither we have uh, representatives of, of the minor minorities in Montenegro. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that, uh, uh, that leads us uh, towards uh, multi-ethnic uh, instability in, in, in the country. Uh, of course, uh, we built a civic and multi-ethnical society. Uh, of course, uh, the reason uh, that I mentioned before, the Democratic Front, so political party uh, in, uh, uh, in, in our country, is the uh, uh, biggest constituent of new majority and part of the government. Uh, that leads us towards, as I told you, multi-ethnic conflicts in country, and uh, uh, I would say turning our back on EU and NATO values. Uh, for the end, I would uh, I will tell you one thing, which is uh, illustrative as well, uh, and it's happening right now in our parliament. Uh, we will have a test for new majority in our parliament in Montenegro. So a new uh, prime minister suggested uh, to new majority and of course to all of, of the members of the parliament to vote for dismissal of the uh, minister of justice 
uh, that deny that denies uh, genocide in Srebrenica. We also have a resolution on Srebrenica voting tomorrow uh, in 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 the parliament. So we will see how many how many of MPs from new major uh, new majority will vote for dismissal of Leposevich, uh, which is very much needed for our international partners and for our civic and multi-ethnical society in Montenegro. We will see uh, whether we have that light at the end of the tunnel. I believe we do. I believe that all of the parties in opposition now, those parties that voted for NATO in 2017, that are with no doubt on EU and NATO path, should in a, a years to come, in, in period uh, ahead of us, should uh, cooperate with I hope those parties in new majority that will prove to the society in Montenegro and abroad that uh, fight and stand for the same values. We'll see tomorrow when we will have the vote, uh, whether we do have those political structures now in new majority. If we do, I believe we will see not uh, perhaps so clearly, but we will see it, that there is a uh, light at the end of a tunnel, which will lead Montenegro back on a path of multi-ethnical democracy, stability, and uh, EU NATO prosperity that we all need, not only in Montenegro, but in Western Balkans as well. So uh, therefore, I thank you for uh, uh, this initiative, and I uh, hope that our US partners especially US partners, but our EU partners as well, will focus their, focus their attention on Western Balkans, especially on Montenegro, uh, because Montenegro has been attacked from 30th of August uh, from uh, all those non-EU and uh, non-Euro-Atlantic elements, uh, uh, of course, fighting for their own interests. We should stand together, therefore, uh, I thank you again, and sorry if I took uh, too much time. Thank you. And now uh, it's time uh, for Mr. Miloš Konatar from United Reform Action. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Kračković. Uh, also, at the beginning, I want to thank the representatives of uh, IRI Institute for uh, for this opportunity to talk uh, about about this. Uh, important issue. Also, I must say that uh, Erie Institute uh, in Washington has uh, uh, very, very good associates here in, in Sarajevo, uh, in uh, Erie Institute branch there, and uh, also in uh, CDT here in uh, Montenegro. And I also want to thank them for uh, all their previous activities and everything what they are going to do in the future. So we are eager to be partners uh, in future activities uh, with the IRI Institute uh, here in, uh, in Montenegro as they are starting to found the branch, branch here. So uh, also I want to, 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 you know, to greet you all from the uh, Parliament of Montenegro. Uh, today on the uh, agenda, as my colleague uh, Mr. Rakočević uh, said, it is uh, uh, it is proposal of the Prime Minister of Montenegro for uh, discharging the Minister of uh, Law in the government of Montenegro because he a couple of months ago, uh, in his speech in in the Parliament of Montenegro, uh, on some. Uh, in some of, uh, of, uh, of his phrases, uh, try to deny uh, a genocide in uh, Srebrenica. And uh, I think the act of uh, Prime Minister of Montenegro, uh, the, the fact that he wanted uh, from Parliament of Montenegro uh, discharging the, the, the Minister of, uh, of Law is a good sign. Uh, one of uh, previous uh, speakers said that, uh, of course, in uh, Montenegro on 30th of August, we had uh, political changes. I think that is important step uh, in the developing of uh, Montenegrin democracy. 
because we cannot speak about democracy anywhere in the world if there is no changing of government. So changing of power, if there is not that, uh, if we do not have that, we cannot speak about democracy. So we are making the first steps of the democracy here in Montenegro because uh, for anyone who are, you know, uh, listening us, uh, uh, follow us, uh, what we are on, on this panel speaking must know that Montenegro in uh, our parliamentary history never changed the government uh, on a free election. So this is on 30th of August, first time. And I think it is uh, important, important, uh, important goal that we, that we achieve. Also what is important regarding the, our uh, European Union and NATO, NATO perspective is that couple couple days after the uh, the elections, three leaders of the winning uh, electoral lists uh, they signed uh, an agreement in which uh, future uh, government of Montenegro will respect the European Union future and the membership of uh, Montenegro in the NATO alliance. Uh, it, it was one of the conditions from uh, civic movement URA in which uh, I am part of. And we are, we are very uh, proud uh, for that standard that we achieved. And uh, as you know, uh, yesterday, a couple of days ago, uh, Prime Minister of Montenegro was attending on the NATO summit. And also first uh, official visit of Prime Minister of Montenegro was visit the Brussels the, the headquarters of European Union and headquarters of uh, NATO Alliance. So I think that is a, a, a good sign that, uh, that uh, we are not going to jeopardize uh, the, the goal of Montenegro, uh, strategic goal of Montenegro, and that is the membership uh, in European Union and stay strong uh, member and partner of uh, NATO Alliance. Uh, when we are speaking, when we, when we are speaking about the, the, the rising of uh, ethno nationalism here in, in Montenegro, we must connect that with the uh, with the 30th yeah. of August of yeah. last year yeah. and what and what happened uh, with the political changes. So uh, first time we have changes for the uh, previous government and uh, for the new government, uh, former opposition, and uh, that. Um, last year, before that elections, we had the uh, the proposal of previous government. Uh, we called it here in Montenegro as a law of church, uh, church property and religious freedom, and that was the fact that basically uh, rise the, the the ghosts of ethno nationalism here in Montenegro. And after 30th of August, uh, we continue in that wrong uh, direction and uh, i hope that we are going to change that uh, i must say i will i will uh, uh, my i will describe my stand uh, the best if i give you the quote of uh, one of uh, uh, one of uh, famous writer from uh, this area which was born here in podgorica borislav tekic and uh, in one of uh, one of his uh, books, he wrote uh, that uh, I'm quoting: "You should love the land of your children, not your grandfathers, because the honor will not depend on where you where we come from, but where we are going to." And I want to 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 talk about where we are going to, and I want that we are going to the European Union and to speak about the future, not about the past, because we cannot change the past, but we can change uh, the future, better future. So uh, I think if, if we as uh, MPs, as, uh, uh, as a part of the, of the political elite, if we are not giving the, 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 the reason for rising ethno-nationalism in, uh, in Montenegro, then we are going to uh, be a good example, good example for the citizens of uh, Montenegro. Uh, one of the achievements when we are talking about the government, for example, and civic society in Montenegro, uh, for the first time we have, uh, as we are as a, as a civic movement, uh, 
vice president of the government of Montenegro is ethnic uh, Albanian. And uh, it is not the, 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 the role and the key, political key, which was granted as a, as a member of a Nationalist Party. Uh, he became the, the vice president of the government of Montenegro as a president of the Civic Party in uh, Montenegro. So I think it is a very good sign in the right uh, direction. And uh, of course, uh, colleagues uh, spoke about that, uh, that we have uh, maybe some things that we need to change uh, in the future to improve in the future. And uh, I am eager to work on that. So I am eager to work uh, on, uh, uh, on the improvements so that uh, we are going to be ready to be uh, members of the European Union. And uh, for a civic movement, Tura, and me personally, uh, we had the one political goal that we have achieved on 30th of August. We wanted to achieve a peaceful change of the government, of the, the uh, authority on the elections. So we achieved that. Our next goal is to do everything as a government, as a political force in Montenegro uh, to, for our country to be next uh, member of the European Union. I think it is very important uh, for the Montenegro. It is very important for the region and uh, the way how we should, uh, let's say, fight against ethno-nationalism uh, in Montenegro is to cooperate more uh, often co and uh, better cooperate in the region of the Western Balkans. And uh, with that better cooperation to do everything, as I said before, for Montenegro to be next member of the European Union. That is our key political goal. And if we do that, if we focus on a good thing in the future, if we focus uh, on uh, where uh, Montenegro will be in 2030 and not speak about where we have been in the 1980, uh, 1918 here in uh, Montenegro, I think that we are going to go in the right the direction. So uh, my, uh, for this uh, part of the session, uh, my, uh, uh, my final conclusion would be, uh, we, will find, uh, we will fight against uh, ethno-nationalism if we uh, speak and uh, do everything what we can for better future and to speak where we are going to be not only where we were. So I choose to speak about future and to do everything for a better future uh, in Montenegro. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Konatar. And now uh, it is a time for uh, Mr. Vesko Garcevic to address his remarks. Uh, 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 thank you for uh, thank you for giving me a chance to uh, take part in this discussion. First of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, International Republican Institute and uh, the Center for Democratic Transition uh, for organizing uh, this event, very timely event, uh, and giving us chance to share your own views on something that is happening and holding in front of our eyes. Uh, in Montenegro. Uh, I would like to, uh, uh, how to say, it, uh, redirect a discussion uh, a little bit and to uh, depoliticize it uh, and to focus again on, what, on uh, uh, the problem uh, that we are discussing this morning. Um, since we have just five minutes or six minutes of our time, and if I go a little bit more than that, I would, I, I, I kindly ask uh, moderator too, forgive me. I will make uh, five points. Uh, first point is, um, let me uh, begin with uh, quoting uh, Benedict Anderson, renowned scholar about uh, uh, who uh, described the creation of nations uh, in his book, uh, Imagine Community. Uh, he outlines, uh, outlined uh, three paradoxes of nationalism, and I see uh, in place in Montenegro and in the region, at least two of them, going on right now. One of them is uh, that political power of nationalism stands in, uh, in contrast to their philosophical power and ideological poverty 
and incoherence. Another thing is that um, uh, nationalistic narratives speak about nations as a primordial thing, whereas nations are modern occurrences in uh, history of uh, humankind. So uh, when we look at narratives go, uh, in Montenegro and in the region, uh, we can recognize um, uh, that uh, we consider all nations um, as old as almost thousand years, at the same time, uh, this uh, actually uh, prevents us from being focused on something that is going on right now and that we need to address in order to make our lives better in the future. This is my first point. The second point is that divisions in Montenegro did not arise with the referendum, but today are deeper than in 2006. And uh, if I can explain and uh, describe in one sentence uh, the time that we are living now in Montenegro, I would say that we are living transition from partocracy to theocracy. Uh, and that nationalistic ideology and xenophobic narratives, they are not new. And they didn't die out as we expected. Actually, we are living revival of them. And uh, they are utilized and, if I can say, weaponized by political elites. And not just in Montenegro. Montenegro is a source of its own nationalism, Montenegrin nationalism, but at the same time, it's a target of a stronger and more malign regional nationalism. So we have to put this in a, a broader uh, regional context. Then all divisions, all divisions are product of different views of Montenegrin identity. But the uh, views of Montenegrin identity lead us to, you know, uh, different attitudes towards values, especially civic values and the understanding of uh, where Montenegrin, Montenegro's place is in modern Europe. Uh, uh, the fourth, you know, as things stand now, I don't see that this will change in the near future. I uh, don't see uh, interest. I actually see the lack of political commitment to nurturing political dialogue in Montenegro. I don't see understanding for others and their arguments. And what I see is the monologue, um, monologue that has become a form of communication in Montenegro. Uh, so the and uh, finally something that uh, uh, also is touched upon by white paper presented this uh, morning and uh, or this afternoon and I fully support the work of Center for Democratic Transition in that regard uh, how we can go forward I think that we uh, to go forward need change of policy not just change of people and I don't see change of policy in place uh, and that change of policy should take place in several social and political domains uh, in order to turn the tide that we are witnessing right now. Uh, and that change of policy includes change of uh, mutually supportive and intertwined policies in several areas. First of all, a new history teaching and commemoration and remembrance of the past, because what we are witnessing now, it is a revision of history. And revision of history, not just recent past, but revision of uh, World War II history uh, in order to give win to uh, different type of nationalistic ideologies. So then education. Education is more serious uh, issue than uh, we, uh, at least my understanding is such that we, uh, uh, you know, see it. Uh, education that will uh, nurture uh, um, and acceptance of diversities and respect for minority groups, not necessarily and not only uh, ethnic and religious minorities. This will bring me to the final point. It is very value orientation. Uh, yeah, I see problem uh, coming from both uh, different uh, sides of political spectrum when it comes to value orientation. Value orientation is uh, gender equality, includes gender equality, uh, you know, uh, equity, uh, equal rights to everybody, regardless of their national identity, and so on, mer meritocracy, uh, and so on and so forth. So uh, if we change this, which is a process and takes a commitment uh, and efforts, which I don't see, uh, then uh, we may count on, on a change in the future. Uh, just proclamation that we want to be part of the European Union. Uh, the process, as you can see, is so long. And uh, since the uh, Thessaloniki process, uh, when it, the process was launched in Thessaloniki in 2003, now we are like an 
18 years from Thessaloniki. And as it stands now, we're gonna wait next 15 to 20 years to join European Union. So uh, if we go this way, and maybe it will happen, uh, it will never happen. So if we change uh, our approach, things will change. If we don't change our approach, I think that uh, we're gonna live uh, through this type of uh, uh, revival of repetition of the situations of the situation that we are living in now in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garcevic. So uh, we have a time to uh, follow up some things with our panelists, and uh, I have one question for for. Uh, Mr. Rakočević and Mr. Konatar, uh, do you see any point for cooperation between your parties in preventing negative trends uh, in Montenegro regarding rise of ethno-nationalism? Uh, and will you launch some initiatives in the in the parliament in order to fight these uh, negative trends? Uh, thank you, Mr. Kraczkovic, for for your uh, answer. I will uh, for your question. I will tr uh, try to be very brief in, in, in my answer. I believe that uh, we do have uh, to find mutual understanding between each other. Definitely, for sure. Uh, I believe that, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, question uh, of Srebrenica and question of dismissal of Mr. Leposevic, uh, which is fundamental question of shared values actually values, mutual values that, that we have to share, uh, that is the point where we should meet all of the political structures and parties. Uh, of course, uh, perhaps uh, uh, because of manipulation in uh, public, uh, uh, in public, uh, uh, perhaps uh, former uh, majority contribute uh, in misunderstanding between each other. Uh, in national level, uh, and I believe that uh, we should all uh, uh, have to try to, to find uh, mutual understanding. But as I told you uh, uh, previously, and I'm standing on that one, uh, we should all, uh, we have to all get together uh, upon uh, those values of anti-fascism, NATO integration, and EU values. With those, we cannot make any compromises because uh, now you can you can hear from part of, of, of a new uh, majority in Montenegro. I told you those pro-Russian elements, uh, which is seventy percent, at least seventy percent in uh, a parliamentary majority. Uh, you can hear them very loudly uh, criticizing us from the opposition uh, uh, that we are not. Uh, uh, eager and uh, able to find mutual understanding. We will never find mutual understanding upon those uh, three things. So multi-ethnical democracy, actually four, multi-ethnical democracy, anti-fascism, uh, and EU and NATO values. We have to gather upon those, uh, those values. And of course, uh, uh, every other uh, a, a possible question and uh, uh, perhaps uh, aspect of our mutual understanding, uh, we are ready to work on. We are ready to work on. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Akocha. It's same question for Mr. Konatar. Okay, thank you. Thank you, of course, for, for your uh, question. Uh, well, we can cooperate if we agree that uh, we want to see uh, Montenegro as a part of European Union. Uh, if we want to do everything to increase uh, independency and, stray, and strength of uh, our institutions here in, in, uh, in Montenegro, uh, and if we want to build Montenegro as a civic uh, society. So basically, uh, we as Civic uh, Momentura when we want to, uh, you know, for, for our political standing, we want to establish uh, our message, political message that uh, everyone uh, who sees Montenegro as a civic European and uh, ecological state uh, can be our partner to work uh, on common 
uh, projects and common goals. Uh, of course, there, there are uh, uh, a lot of uh, open issues uh, here uh, in Montenegro, especially if we are, uh, if we are speaking about uh, achieving the European standards and standards of European Union. And that also uh, means that we need to have uh, zero tolerance on uh, corruption and organized crime. And that is very important issue for us because in all, uh, I am saying again, and that, that is very important, in all reports from our European partners, European Union, uh, there are remarks that uh, Montenegro hasn't achieved enough results in fighting against corruption and organized crime. So we want to change that. And uh, we are asking and we received uh, uh, support from our European partners to, uh, to fight uh, against uh, organized crime without uh, any, any compromise. And we want to do that. So everyone who wants to do that can be our partner. So I am saying if we uh, speak about where Montenegro are going to, we will find common uh, common goals and uh, common mutual points. We want that, but we want to, you know, uh, as I said before, we want to build uh, Montenegro as a, a, a strong democracy, strong democracy, uh, civic uh, and European country. So uh, also what, the, what is uh, important that we, that, the, that we said before, we, our uh, political party, Sigmund Mumentura, uh, for example, for tomorrow, we are going to vote uh, on declaration on, on, on Srebrenica and uh, uh, discharging of uh, Minister Leposevic. Uh, we said before, we have our clear standings about that. We are going to vote for, uh, for the declaration of genocide in Srebrenica, and also we are going to vote uh, on this, the proposal of Prime Minister for discharging of Minister of Law in the government of Montenegro, Vladimir Leposevic. And uh, it is not, uh, we are not, uh, uh, you know, uh, we are not interesting uh, who are going to vote with us on that. It is our, uh, you know, uh, principal, uh, principal values that we are going to, to show. Uh, also with the declaration on Srebrenica and proposal of discharging uh, of uh, Minister uh, Leposevic. So, okay, let's see. Let's see what, uh, what, uh, what kind of voting we will have tomorrow. I think that it is uh, that my co colleague, uh, 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 Mr. Rakocevic, overrate the percentage of uh, Russian influence in, uh, in uh, majority, uh, new parliament majority. Uh, you know, uh, Montenegro is a member of NATO alliance. So there is no any, uh, any intention on initiative from parliamentary majority uh, to question that status of Montenegro. So we didn't have that kind of, uh, of activities here in Montenegro. Montenegro is strong partner in NATO alliance. It is one of the program's goals of uh, civic movement URA. And I will say what I said in the first round of discussions. Uh, after the elections of 30th of August, we signed common agreement, the leaders of, of uh, three uh, victorious uh, election lists signed the agreement in which uh, future goals of Montenegro will be uh, you know, remaining the, 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 as a part uh, partner of uh, NATO alliance and strong uh, uh, you know, strong uh, continuing of uh, road uh, Montenegro as a future member of uh, European Union. So that didn't change. That didn't change. I will say again, Prime Minister of Montenegro didn't went on the first uh, visit, international visit as a Prime Minister to Moscow or to Belgrade or anyone else, but uh, the Brussels, the headquarters of the European Union and head headquarters of NATO Alliance. That is symbolism. And that is showing what is the intention of new parliamentary majority, our Sikh uh, Muntura, and what is important, the government of, uh, of Montenegro. And this proposal of prime minister for discharging uh, Minister Leposevic is also showing what is the intention of the government of Montenegro.
Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Konatar. Uh, maybe we, we can start uh, with the questions submitted by, by the audience. Uh, you have, uh, the audience uh, have the opportunity through the questions audience uh, uh, function uh, of uh, the, this Zoom webinar to submit their questions. And maybe uh, the first question uh, uh, for Mr. Garcevic. Uh, uh, Mr. Tucker Jones said, I admire Montenegro's commitment to EU accession despite difficulties along the path. Uh, which EU accession criteria do you think will be the most challenging to deal with for Montenegro? Uh, I see another question which is very similar to this. Then we can cover the two questions with one answer. First okay. of all, uh, first of all, uh, the most difficult criteria for Montenegro to deal with definitely will be criteria related to chapters 23, 24, uh, uh, and the rule of law, uh, fight organized crime and corruption uh, at home affairs. It's no doubt. Uh, it is very important to keep in mind that uh, for it asks country, not just Montenegro, any candidate country for a deep and thorough uh, democratic transformation to be able to join the European Union. There will be other, uh, maybe equally difficult chapters. I'm not expert like, a, I don't know, uh, agriculture or eco uh, environmental issues and so on and so forth. But uh, since we are discussing this issue today, I think this issue is related to the uh, to chapters 23, 24 to some extent, uh, and about uh, related to atmosphere environment in which uh, political environment in which Montenegro is going to uh, tackle uh, those issues. Um, uh, but problem is not just on, on the side of Montenegro, and that deserves another debate of this type, another panel discussion. I would say problem is also on the European side. I can describe current process as, um, you know, um, you know, two, uh, process between two partners when one is not uh, willing to take another one in their home, uh, while other one is pretending that uh, they would would like to, uh, uh, you know, uh, carry out reforms in order to become eligible to join the European Union. So we are in a some process when uh, both sides are stuck into uh, one side is uh, can be described as a enlargement fatigue, whereas the other side can be described as a, as a reform fatigue. Uh, and um, things needs to be changed on both sides for process to revive. Uh, this is what I uh, briefly can uh, can uh, uh, give as my answer to the uh, question. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Garcevic. I uh, have one inspiring question for our MPs. So uh, this is a question by Mr. Paul McCarthy. On the issue of uh, Malin foreign authori authoritarian influence, uh, how does this impact inter-ethnic religious relations in Montenegro? Uh, CDT put forward a policy proposal recently to the Speaker of the Montenegrin Parliament to establish a special parliamentary committee whose task would be uh, to tackle foreign interference in democratic processes Following the uh, example of the Special Committee on the Foreign Interference in the European Parliament, uh, what is uh, the government and the parliament doing to tackle this problem? And maybe uh, to, to add, uh, to add uh, this question to Mr. Konatar and Rakocevic, do, do your parties support uh, the establishment of, of this parliamentary committee? Okay. Uh, my turn. Yeah, yeah, your turn. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gershman. I, I will be very brief. Uh, thanks for uh, that initiative from CDT. Uh, our, my party, party that I belong to, is uh, accepted, accepted uh, the initiative. So uh, we will support uh, that topic in the parliament and committee that. Uh, have to be uh, has to be established uh, of course uh, as i uh, told you previously uh, we have uh, 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 
at least, uh, so 27, at least 27 out of 41 MPs in the majority, 27 out of 41 uh, that are strong pro-Russian element, uh, not only influenced by, but uh, financed from uh, Moscow and Belgrade. Uh, it is uh, uh, the thing that they really transparently uh, show they 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 don't hide it. So uh, for your for your knowledge, they uh, uh, refused to uh, accept that initiative from CDT, uh, as uh, uh, for, as as I am informed. Uh, so of course we will we will uh, we will see if uh, the opposition and part of the majority will accept uh, that initiative that uh, has to tackle and. Uh, 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 will show uh, whether there is uh, uh, and it is uh, influence uh, uh, from abroad in Montenegrin political processes and of course uh, elections. Milos, I think it's your turn. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, colleague. <laughs> Uh, of course, at the beginning, I want to say that uh, I personally, as a member of parliament and uh, my party, we are supporting uh, the, the intention to uh, establish uh, that kind of, uh, let's say, parliamentary board or committee to speak about, uh, about, about uh, this kind of, uh, of issues. Uh, uh, every action uh, which can, uh, which can uh, prevent or put on light uh, uh, any, uh, uh, let's say, uh, influence, bad influence uh, from abroad to Montenegro society, Montenegro's national interests, uh, we are supporting it. So, so uh, okay, we will see uh, the, the, uh, how the initiative of uh, CDT, the president of uh, parliament will continue on, but uh, I had a in, in Montenegro media, uh, previously I said that uh, regarding our side, this kind of uh, initiative or any other initiative on this matter, we are going to, to support it. Uh, regarding the, 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 the influence, I mean, uh, 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 there is no country in the world that is immune uh, on the influence from uh, other countries. I mean, we had in, in uh, in uh, presidential elections in uh, United States, uh, there is still debates about the influence, the hybrid war uh, uh, from uh, Russia, the influence uh, on the uh, last uh, the, the, the elections, presidential elections in the United States in 2016. So uh, the 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 best defense uh, on any. Uh, international uh, influence, abroad influence, is that we in Montenegro build a strong and independent uh, institutions. If we do that, then we are going to, to fight against, against the, the influence from abroad with, uh, with much more success. So that is uh, what is our goal. And that is what I am uh, trying to, to, to do to, uh, as we are as we are, you know, uh, going further in our European in our European road, uh, that is uh, what we should, you know, uh, to do better to build the the the, the more independent and more uh, institutions uh, which are uh, stronger than right now. Then we are going. That is the best defense on any other. Uh, foreign uh, influence uh, on Montenegro's uh, national uh, interest uh, and society here. Yeah. And also Mr. Garcevic uh, would uh, like to make a few points uh, about uh, this question. So Mr. Garcevic, it's your turn. Thank you. I wanted to first uh, uh, support the idea of the formation of the uh, creation of a uh, Committee on Foreign Interference, uh, though I think that uh, maybe I'm wrong, as it stands now in the parliament, this committee uh, uh, is not possible without, uh, to be created, to be formed, is not possible without support of opposition, because I think that, uh, because part of the current uh, ruling, um, uh, ruling um, uh, 
government uh, will be against this. But I wanted to make some other points here. Uh, that brings me to my point about how Montenegro is a source of its own um, nationalism, but also targeted by uh, other stronger and uh, more malign but in some cases are supported even by uh, some uh, powerful um, actors outside of the region like Russia. So when we uh, look at uh, nationalism or situation in Montenegro, I would say that most, uh, 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 let's say, most uh, difficult uh, uh, is to deal with uh, not just uh, Montenegrin uh, nationalism, but nationalisms that are segments of um, a broader concept uh, um, of uh, idea. Uh, and we take uh, like a so-called middle ground approach, we'll treat all nationalisms equally, I would say, uh, by taking this approach, we would actually give uh, the rise to uh, stronger ones. It is like, uh, uh, if I may take this comparison, if it is like uh, what the UN Security Council did at the beginning of the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina, when it introduced sanctions uh, embargo uh, on uh, arm embargo on all sides involved in the war, at the moment when uh, the Serbian side had, was uh, heavily armed uh, with the uh, Yugoslav army behind it and uh, uh, Muslims having just light arms. It actually uh, introduces this uh, means uh, uh, supporting one side against one or another side, cementing status quo. Uh, what committee, in my view, should be doing is actually to analyze the root causes of each nationalism and uh, uh, who supports it and who interferes into Montenegrin domestic affairs from outside and with what uh, uh, interests, motives, and objectives it is happening. Thank you, Mr. Garcevic, and also Ms. Milica Kovacevic, president of CDT. I want to make uh, some point about, about this issue. So, uh, Milica, the floor is yours. Thank you, and I'm, I'm going to be really brief. Thank you, Paul, for mentioning this because it's it's important initiative, and uh, we actually put that initiative publicly. We did only public advocacy, and we got public answers from almost all political parties in the parliament. And the situation is right now, according if they stick to their public statements that there is uh, more than enough majority uh, for creation of that committee. And I would just like to slightly correct uh, Mr. Rekorčević, not all 27 members of the biggest club are against. So SMP, Socialist People, People's Party, also publicly stated that they would support a formation of the committee. So what's the problem now? The problem is, uh, well, uh, the, the stability of the government, the, the, many, the many issues are hostage uh, to, to one uh, uh, group in, in that parliament. And we, we will certainly not allow for this idea to be sacrificed to uh, you know, uh, political bargaining. Uh, as soon as this session is over and uh, hopefully we finally get the, the budget and solve these like burning issues, we will get back uh, to the leadership of the parliament and demand for this to be put on the agenda. And, you know, so that everyone can vote actually and, and express their opinions. And then we will ask parties who said that in media to stick to that and to vote for the forming of the committee, because that's the part of, of the thing that I mentioned that we need to get dialogue back to the institutions. We can't remain on polarized sides about, you know, talking completely opposite things. There is influence, there is no influence. It is dangerous, it's not dangerous. We really need to 
to get it back to the parliament where my majority is obvious and no decision can be brought without the support of the of the majority but basically to try to find a common ground around the parties not maybe to talk about uh, you know politically about influences but to talk about how to build the barriers in our uh, democratic and economic governance how to uh, implement the tools that will prevent any and every uh, malign foreign influence that Montenegro is exposed now to or may be exposed in the years to come. So, uh, uh, one more question uh, to our MPs, Mr. Akocevic and Konatar. Uh, this is the question by Mr. Randolph Kent. So, uh, as uh, Ms. Kovacevic said, nationalism is an easy way to turn out votes. If certain political parties benefit electorally from nationalism, how can parties that want to reduce nationalism and intercommunal tensions per persuade the voters that they should uh, not vote for that? Uh, so, persuade voters that they should not vote for national parties. So. Uh, your parties are both civic parties, so we, you have uh, this kind of problem, maybe. Mr. Rakočević. Uh, Mr. Rakočević, thank you. Thank you very much for, for, for the question. Uh, so I believe that superior program policies uh, can persuade uh, voters to vote for the parties that belong to civic uh structures and programs uh and i do believe that uh, nationalism uh and voters that vote for nationalistic parties uh, are in minority uh in our society uh, unfortunately you have always 27 percent of the voters that vote on the election voting for nationalistic party i'm talking about democratic front uh Unfortunately, that number uh, is still high and unfortunately is getting higher. Uh, therefore, all other parties uh, uh, have to uh, uh, furthermore develop their program policies uh, to uh, put that uh, numbers down, uh, that voters that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, are attracted to uh, nationalistic parties. And I believe that uh, responsibility is uh, in my party as well. Uh, because we are the, the, the most strongest party with, uh, with uh, 30 uh, MPs. Uh, the biggest one after us is uh, nine MPs. So you see how strong we are. And I believe that uh, big resp responsibility is uh, on our side to uh, work furthermore to emancipate our society, uh, for voters to vote for civic parties, uh, parties with best programs. And I believe that uh, that period is uh, ahead of us, uh, in spite of all the struggles and troubles we have in, in Montenegro. Thank you. Uh, thank you. The same question for Mr. Konatar. Well, we, uh, uh, I am and, and my party are seeing the, the, the we are guiding ourselves as uh, to put on the, on a, on a, to, to public what is good for the for the whole society, not just what is good uh, uh, for our political party. So that is why maybe we went on a harder and longer way, but uh, we think it is the right way. So the right way is to build Montenegro as a civic society and. Uh, European society and, as I said, ecological state, which we are, uh, which we in, in, in that kind, we can be recognized by whole world. I will just uh, uh, notify that we are uh, constitutionally the only ecological state in, state in the world. So I think it is a good uh, basic to work on that. And uh, as a proof against the na all nationalism, ethno-nationalism, the uh, president of our civic movement is an uh, ethnic and national Albanian. So I think it is uh, uh, the we are not acting in uh, political life as a party that promotes civic values. We are living that civic values. 
And I think that is uh, important. And uh, more and more citizens of Montenegro and voters are see that. And we are very happy that uh, support for our civic movement are growing up. And we, uh, we are continue. We are going to continue to work on that. I think the, uh, the, the, the success uh, of uh, speaking uh, about programs and the real uh, problems of the citizen in Montenegro or citizens in Montenegro will, uh, will uh, depend uh, on uh, how we as uh, MPs and uh, you know, public uh, persons, the, the political elite are uh, showing ourselves. For example, I will just, uh, I, I was uh, eager waiting my colleague, uh, uh, Mr. Kocic, uh, if he are not going to, to mention the, re the responsibility of his party, but he, he ruined my, uh, my strategy, he, he mentioned that. Uh, I have, for example, uh, uh, in uh, January or, or February, I cannot remember, uh, I wrote on my Twitter account, uh, I put the, 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 I put the photo of uh, Novak Djokovic when he uh, won on uh, Australian Open. And of course, as uh, Novak Djokovic, which is a universal world phenomenon, uh, I put it on my Twitter account and one of the MPs of the uh, uh, opposition, he was accusing me that I'm a, a Serbian nationalist Chetniks be, or because I, I was supporting Novak Djokovic. So that is uh, how the crazy, uh, the, the crazy situations can be in political life. And uh, that is why I am eagering to give up on that uh, craziness and to work normally on, uh, uh, on real uh, life issues of our citizens and to look uh, to the future. If we are looking to the future, then we will find our, our common goals. And uh, that is why, how we can work together. That is, I am asking from, uh, from uh, all uh, participants uh, of this debate. Thank you, Mr. Conatar. We have uh, one more question uh, to all interlocutors, but I will address to Mr. Gacevic. This is the question by uh, the participant uh, called HP. Uh, what do you think about the support of the international community and key EU countries in preserving the civic concept of Montenegro and the influence of the Serbian church on politics? That's a very interesting question. Uh, and uh, as for like a, a larger debate, I would say that uh, let us begin from uh, the Serbian uh, Orthodox Church position and uh, point of view. Serbian Orthodox Church uh, promotes and has been promoting for some time now, um, uh, particularly in the last five to 10 years, something that can be described as, uh, um, uh, let's say, Orthodox conservatism, which is very close to what Russia has promoting or and uh, so-called Russian world uh, among Eastern Christians and as well as in Europe. Uh, so therefore, uh, Serbian Orthodox Church is uh, by far the biggest uh, uh, and the most vocal supporter to Russia and Russian Orthodox Church. Uh, if that, that type of policy and narratives are uh, often translated uh, uh, with uh, uh, in encouragement to people who target others who are not um, uh, who are not orthodox population uh, and we have witnessed that in Montenegro lately and we have witnessed that in the region too uh, particularly uh, Bosniaks are target because uh, this uh, this concept is exclusive in it, in its essence um, um, and the nationalism that um, embraces only uh, members uh, that belong to that group that can describe itself as like a um, um, orthodox population that uh, nurtured the data of like um, uh, uh, ideology. Uh, at the same time, uh, its role is growing in Montenegro, as I mentioned, and uh, not only me, the white paper has noticed it rightly. Uh, ro the role of church is growing in Montenegro, and uh, it's not growing only in, in terms of narratives and in influence, informal influence. Uh, I think politically is growing because it has influence on this government, uh, and uh, that interest um, has, uh, you know, 
can be seen through uh, appointment of number of ministers uh, and policy that government uh, follows in number of areas. Uh, what the European Union or international community and the US uh, uh, can do. They can promote values, uh, values and value orientation, values that are, uh, you know, um, you know, support understanding for difference, for diversity, respect for it, um, that uh, values that are more, uh, um, you know, uh, in line with uh, uh, European Union values, set of values at the end of the day, we want to be European members, uh, European Union members. So it is the role uh, of European Union and the US, in, in, including organizing events like we are doing right now, or more of this type, or more political presence uh, in, uh, uh, in the region through its initiatives, projects, programs, support to um, uh, non-governmental organizations and think tanks that promote uh, values which are associated with the uh, European Union values or values of the West. Uh, and this is what I think they should be doing in the future more than I have done so far, particularly in the last several years. Uh, thank you, Mr. Gacevic. We have uh, time maybe for one more question to Mr. Konatar. Uh, the question uh, was submitted by uh, Randolph Kent. There are significant divisions between the parties that compose the current government with some ethnically based and some civically based. What EU needed reforms does the government agree on and what steps will the government take in the next year to implement those reforms? Well, we are, we are, it is not a secret that the parliamentary majority there there is, uh, uh, let's say, different uh, programs uh, and program values of the members of the parliamentary parliamentary uh, majority in Montenegro. Uh, our government has the, the, let's say, specific role. I don't know how the the the, the uh, uh, how the people uh, did are the people knew the the, the fact that uh, our government in Montenegro. Uh, uh, the members of the government are not basically the, the members of the political parties in, uh, in, uh, in Parliament of Montenegro. It is a non-partisan government. Only vice president of the government of Montenegro is a, a partisan uh, person. So uh, that is why, uh, for example, we do not have any coalition agreement signed by the the, the, the parties which, uh, which are the parliamentary majority in Montenegro. Uh, we all, as a parliamentary majority, voted for the government, which is nonpartisan. And that is uh, that uh, specific uh, occasion in Montenegro. As I said, one of the main goals uh, of the government uh, is increasing the speed of uh, European integration of uh, Montenegro. And uh, uh, totally, totally, uh, you know, uh, uh, totally focused uh, to uh, to do the reforms, uh, the, the 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 needed reforms, uh, reforms, and to work on comprehensive electoral reform, in which we will need the support of uh, our colleagues from uh, opposition, uh, and uh, we are. Uh, waiting that uh, I agree what uh, what uh, I think uh, Milica said uh, at the beginning of uh, of this panel is that uh, we need political dialogue in Montenegro and uh, I am asking uh, all uh, all our colleagues from opposition to sit uh, and to speak about uh, about all open issues in in Montenegro. The one of the key reforms. Uh, which we done uh, was the changes changes on the law of uh, state prosecution here in uh, Montenegro. We adopt that uh, changes and uh, with uh, reform uh, reforms in state prosecution. Right now we are uh, we are starting to do to to you know implement that reforms and we are uh, waiting to achieve results in fight against the corruption and uh, organized crime. And I am pretty sure that we, in the next half year, we will see the results of that uh, of that changes. So that is the first step that we did uh, regarding the the 
so much needed uh, increasing the European uh, speed of European integration of Montenegro. Thank you, Mr. Konatar, and our time's up. At the end, I would like to, to thank you all, especially our panelists for their time and will to uh, be a part of uh, this uh, very interesting and important discussion. Also, thanks the audience to their uh, questions and uh, thanks the people from the International Republican Institute who organized this event. Thank you all and kind regards from my side. Thank you all.